Karen Goss. Good evening, Alpia. If we were to believe the media, it's absolutely impossible for young investors to get into the market right now. Who out here is under 40? It's quite a few of you, actually. How many people have bought a property in the last two years? So it's not impossible. Can we actually give these guys a round of applause, please? But these are the people who have sacrificed and been creative in order to get into the market. While it may not be as easy as it was 10 or 20 years ago, I don't know, I wasn't buying that then. And that's why I got involved in Arthia and we were able to create the Young Investors Meeting. Because I wanted to surround myself by people like this, who were in the same situation as myself, facing the same challenges as myself, and some of them have overcome them and some of them are learning from each other. What I was then able to do, because we only meet once a month and I'm in the market full time, I created a Facebook group where young Kiwis all around the world who are investing back in Auckland and New Zealand are on there on a day-to-day -day basis, bouncing ideas around, sharing what they're doing, sharing their learnings, sharing their mistakes, and just helping each other out. Because many of us back home, being so young and investing in property, getting mortgages, we're in a negative environment where we've constantly got people telling us, you're spreading yourself too thin. What are you doing investing in property? Don't you know we're in a bubble? And so when I'm with my, my normal friends, because you do realize we're the weird ones, right? So when I'm back with my normal friends and I'm throwing around words like LVRs and yields and capital growth and they're looking at me like I'm crazy. But these guys, we all speak the same language and we're all able to communicate with each other. And better yet, they're the ones who encourage us to keep carrying on. So I created a website, youngpeewiesandproperty.com, where I'm able to blog and share all my learnings with everyone else out there. Because we idolise people like Sir Bob Jones. But we all forget that many years ago, Sir Bob Jones was only just starting out in property. Now I'm not comparing myself to him, but imagine if we could have gone back 20 years, 30 years, and just got a snippet of where he was, what he was thinking, and what he's doing. So I was able to create a website and upload videos of the mistakes I'm making, the good things I'm doing, the challenges I'm facing and how I've been able to overcome them. Because while I've been lucky enough to spend over $40,000 on mentoring and coaching and education for many people, especially us young ones just starting out, that's not possible. Now I had this, I had this presentation all prepared and then 2.30 this afternoon I got a message, Facebook message from a guy called Billy. And this is, for me, this is why I do it, why I put myself on the line and make myself vulnerable to all the internet trolls out there. Because when you get a message like this, it just makes me want to carry on doing what I'm doing and it's just so inspirational to me. Because we all probably know that property investors aren't the flavour of the month at the moment. <laughs> With the market going so crazy, we're getting blamed for a lot of things. But I think we need to fight back, because we're the proactive ones. We're the ones taking our future into our own hands. Would I be right in saying that the majority of you are not in property just for the truckloads of cash? Would I be right in saying that most of you are just trying to get a better retirement or look after your families? For me, that is true, but my retirement's still a few years away. For me, it all comes down to a girl. Now, we've been together for three years, but there's one major problem with her. She's German. Now, I have no problem with Germans, although their jokes about their sausages are the worst. Oh... But Germany's a 24-hour flight away, that way. And I've been there seven times now, which does have its benefits. 
But we have said that we're not going to get married, we're not going to have any children until we're financially free. It's more than just about Miriam though. For me and her, we love our travelling. And I was lucky enough when I worked on the oil rigs that I got to experience being able to travel and have money at the same time. I was able to do the things I wanted to do. However, I only had a limited amount of time before I got pulled back to the rigs. So Miriam finishes uni in two years time and we're going to go travelling for a year where we can just sit back on a beach in Thailand and get paid a residual income. So for me, it's not about the truckloads of cash and it's not about having seven figures in your bank account. As long as I've got my girl by my side and a cocktail in my hand, I'm pretty happy. So this was my best investment I ever bought. This is a negatively geared property up in Playhead, which has seen no growth in the last two years. But it's the best because it's the one which got me started. Since starting, I've seen many people come through trying to find that perfect property that they still haven't started. Your first property is never going to be your best investment. If it is, it's probably something wrong. It was because this property was such a dud as an investment, don't get me wrong, it's a fantastic home, but as an investment, it's just a dud. So that got me going out and searching for the answers of why and what makes a good investment. Along the way, I came across a guy by the name of Steve McKnight. Now I still fly to Melbourne every two months to go catch up and spend a day with Steve. Steve's bought 200 properties, sorry, he owns 200 properties at the moment. And when he decided he was going to go to America and buy commercial property, he managed to raise $20 million in six months. So I think he knows what he's doing. So it was with Steve that I was able to set my goals and more importantly, to help set the strategy behind to achieve those goals. Do any of you guys think it would be really cool to learn from a guy who's bought a house every six and a quarter days for the last 10 years? No one? Because I'm working with Serena to try and bring him out here to talk to you guys. What I discovered though is it's very difficult to buy houses in Auckland when you're working night shift on an oil rig in the middle of the team or sea. So in the end I quit my job and I moved back here. But now I had another problem. Whereas before I had the money but no houses, now I had all the houses but no money. So I had to start from scratch and figure out how I was going to buy houses. So I was, uh, I was able to connect up with an old family and friend of ours. She'd always loved property, but she just didn't know anything about it. So we joined up together, and we went into Odahu, and we bought a property where we were able to add enough value to it to redraw our, our capital back out and still hold a cash flow positive property. So it's basically a free property which pays us to hold it. Having proved that the strategy works, not only to her, but to myself, we were pretty keen to do some more. In fact, she's a bit angry I'm not working fast enough. So we went out and we've just finished our home and income at Manurewa, where we've done the same thing. Having discovered home and incomes, I've got to say, I'm in love. Sorry, Miriam. <laughs> Because I've spent so much time on the ground in the market and getting to know the agents, getting to know the people, getting to know the areas and the prices that you're selling, I discovered I was pretty good at finding deals. So I was able to team up with Marie Tassel and I went and got my license and I became a property finder. So now I'm not only sharing everything I learned with all the other investors, I'm actually able to help them find great deals too. And because I'm hanging out with investors like yourselves every single day, I'm constantly learning and picking up new little bits of info and new tricks. Could you imagine being a fly on the wall 
in a room where Lisa Dudson and David Whitburn are sitting there talking property together. Luckily, a month ago, I got to be that fly. And I learnt a lot, and I was able to go out and share again. I used to believe that I was born too late, because I missed out on the boom of all booms. However, having met investors who built up large portfolios only to lose it all, and those investors were happy to share with me what went wrong and what they're going to do next time, I've got to say I'm pretty lucky that I was able to come in and start learning in the recession. Because it took me over a year to get my head together, get all my education, and by the time I jumped on the property ladder for, for proper, knowing what I was doing, the market had already recovered and is now in a boom. So for our portfolio, I'm only interested in cash flow positive. We're keeping everything positive. And Warren Buffett has two rules. The first rule is, never lose money. Because we've actually got none of our capital in the portfolio, because we've renovated, added value and pulled it back out, if we were to lose our entire portfolio, as sad as that would be, it wouldn't really matter because we haven't lost anything except manufactured equity. The true meaning of wealth is not what you have. It's what you have when you lose everything. In 1990, I was three years old, yet I was $900 million richer than Donald Trump. Sadly, that's not the case today. But it just goes to show you, the skills and the knowledge you have will be able to bring you back every time. Warren Buffett's second rule is always remember rule number one. So our loans are principal and interest, because I literally had my tenants paying off my house. We're using this boom to raise our, our values, which in turn is pushing down our LVRs. Ideally, we'd like to get down to around 65%. But what we're really doing is we're getting prepared, because when the market turns and all those houses go on sale, you know I'm going shopping. So uh, we're not going to do the second runner up or first runner up thing. We're going to go straight into the drum roll here and obviously a very, very high budget. <coughs> it's not usually the bits and stakes, it's like just like the expected NZ Idol uh, and it's got talent and the other uh, show up here. Yeah. The voting was very, very close. I can't tell you this, the, the pressure that was. It's been counted, recounted, it's been tough. But at the end of the day, uh, there is one winner. Put your hands together for Kyron Ross. Hey guys, so I'm still coming down from a high, having just won the New Zealand Property Idol Award from Apia. Uh, so I want to put a big thank you out to whoever nominated me in the first place. To be able to get recognised for the work I'm doing, it's just an awesome feeling. So, a huge thank you to you all.